So it's just a hair after midnight on July 2nd, 2013. I just got done test running the code to make another batch of parts here. And since it is so late, I want to shut down the machine so it doesn't run all night. The steppers, stepper motors stay energized if the uh, power's onto the machine. And I don't want to just hit the power button because I set zeros and everything's all ready to go. So I, what I want to do is set it up so tomorrow when I'm ready to run these parts I can just jump right in and hit go and everything is going to be set just fine. It's never quite that easy of course but that's the uh, that's the goal. So here's how I have developed a method to do it. First of all this is where the uh, machine reference position is I guess. This is where it, it goes when it uh, heads to the home location after I've set the zeros for this part. So the zero in this case, the way I choose to set zeros, I set my zero position initially at the corner of the vise, vise where the uh, uh, non-movable jaw is located. And then basically, uh, to center this part, since it's a little wider than the, vi the vise, I shifted my X zero location one and a half inches off the end and then set that to zero. So that's the goal. So my zero location is right about the corner of this part uh, or the edge of the material right here one and a half inches off the edge of the, the uh, non-movable vice jaw. In fact, to set the uh, machine up, probably out of focus here, but set, to set the machine up initially I have a zero location marked on the block so I know it's not actually a zero but so I know where to position the block, block left to right before I machine it. Probably focused on the stuff in the background. Anyway, there's a mark right there, but the zero location is right here. So the first thing I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is send the machine to X0, Y0. moving at whatever feed rate it was at last time. Kind of slow here. Then just to be sure that I'm comfortable with that location, I'll run the head down close. Do a general check of the center line. That looks pretty good should be about 100 thousandths of material to the left uh, in the negative x direction of the center line of the, uh, the spindle. So that looks pretty good from this direction. And then the Y looks pretty good as well. So that's my X0, Y0 location. Now the next thing I'm going to do actually pick the tool that I use for setting the zero in this in this case my uh, Z touch tool as I have it called in the tool table uh, see the DRO says I'm at 1.43 positive so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to send it to zero positive now there's no tool loaded so there shouldn't be an issue with the uh, mill head crashing into the table because the Z, Z touch tool has a Tormach piece here. Z touch tool is zero. So that's about where it sits normally. So it said I'm at 1.43 above that, so it's going to move 1.43 down. So I, ha I should have this amount of space between the, uh, the stock and the uh, head of the mill or the spindle, whatever you want to call that. That's what I got. So I'm going to send my Send the Z axis to Z zero. Speed it up this time. How about I actually type some stuff? Z zero fifty. So I see the Z is at the zero now. I'm on the the uh, Z touch tool, and this is the position where the head is. Now, the next step is insurance we'll call it. What I'll do is actually use the print screen key of the keyboard in this case right there. And I'll open up Microsoft Paint which I have saved in my taskbar. I'm using the Tormach High, uh, what do call this, the High Performance Machine Controller, whatever the, whatever the term is. 
and then I'll just control V to paste that screenshot in. This is Microsoft Paint. And I'll save it to the desktop. See I have others saved here. We'll call this today's date to 130713. Shut down just like the others. Save. File name is now changed. And that was saved to the desktop. So if I have any question any questions the following day or following week, whatever, I can check this document. Again, this is the uh, the image here. And this gives me all the parameters. X, Y, and Z zero using tool number one. That's how I know where I am. So then I feel comfortable in shutting the machine down. So X, Y location shouldn't change. I've noticed that there is sometimes a little bit of drift in the Z. No big deal, probably related to the brake, the power coming off, whatever. So I actually will still touch off the Z the following day, which is why, even though I had a little bit of time, uh, I didn't do any cutting on this part at all on this stock because when I set my zero, I set it on the top face of the stock. So that uh, now tomorrow I'll be able to uh, touch the Z zero again just to be sure I'm in the right place and then check it all and I don't have to set my X zero Y zero again. So it's not a perfectly foolproof method but it allows me to shut down the machine so I'm not running 220 volt steppers all night long. And that's it. Just to be sure, uh, actually, I guess it's not it. When I hit File Exit, are you sure you want to end session? Yes. Fix your save? Yes. So the software is turned off, off now, but let's do a quick test. I'll open up the milling Mach 3. You see that my X0 and Y0 are still set, but the Z0 is set at some seemingly random value here. Now. Also, the other thing you'll notice is that the tool selected is tool zero, which has no offset. So what I'll do is I'll wake the machine up, reset it, and set my tool to one. See the Z zero has switched back to the zero location from that 5.584 or whatever it was. So that's it. But you know, so referencing hasn't been done, I can still do that, and it's no problem. In fact, why don't we do that just to test? So I just set X and Y zero after doing the Z zero. These are the values from before. Send it back to X0, Y0. At 50. Whoops. Accidentally hit the step button here. That's not cool. This is the one I want right here. Not that way, of course. And let's run the Z back down close and see how we are set on the zeros. All right, that's pretty satisfactory. And that is as well. Now there's one last check. So tool one is loaded. Go to Z0 and tool one. I keep making that mistake, but whatever. So that should be the same place it was in before. Quick check. So it's definitely lower. Oh, you know what? It's not lower. Just this holder 
not the smoothest. There we go. Sometimes the holder holds up, hangs up. So that's my zero position right there. It's about right. But that just, for demonstration purposes, I'd actually do it for real. Move back in the tool holder here. I have to do it for real if I'm getting ready to run parts, but I'm not right now. It's now the evening of July 2nd, 2013, and I'm getting ready to restart my operations for the evening. Last night I set up the uh, home position of the machine so that I could pick up my zero where I left it yesterday without having to do a bunch of work. I got the stock loaded and uh, the Z height is set, the X, Y uh, position is set as well. And I wanted to uh, do the changeover without too much trouble. So while the machine is booting, I'll review quickly. The uh, Z position was set to a a uh, certain height based on a tool, everything was set uh, to the tool zero. Let me uh, reference all here. Whoop, you know what? How about I actually hit the start button on the machine? Now I can hit the reset and then ref. So the machine is returning to the home position, the oiler while I'm waiting. Okay, so it's sitting in the position where it calls home. I'm going to send it back to X0, Y0. So I don't have any concerns about whether or not this is accurate. I'm pretty sure about that. And if it's not, it's off a little bit. No sweat, really. The one that I am concerned about is the Z height more than anything, because this is the one that I think has, uh, if anything has changed, that's the one that did change. So since I've referenced the uh, tool, I'm going to, uh, sorry, since I've referenced the axis, I'm gonna to switch to tool one, which is my Z offset touch tool. I'm gonna to load it into the uh, mill and then I'm going to check the zero position. We'll see how that turns out. Turns out. So let me shut off the video real quick and load the tool. All right, my Z touch tool is loaded. I'm going to shift the tool position to a place where I can uh, measure easily. Usually set it a quarter inch in from the corner. Drop the uh, Pull down on the part here. And this is the position I call, oops, missed it again. That's the position I call zero right there. Touch on the tool. Now let's see where it shows up on the DRO. Get an idea. So it's three thousandths off, which isn't terribly surprising. That's about what I expect. No big deal. Why so check it? Now it's set to zero again. So that's it. I'm confident that my X zero Y zero position is good on this. I don't have any reason to believe otherwise. Be a quarter inch over this way and a quarter inch up this way, and that's right about uh, the end there. In fact, let me load a different tool that will help demonstrate that a little bit better. So I've loaded my a uh, tool that I use for doing uh, chamfers and set it down close to the part. It's not sitting on it, but it's close. And the position is still X positive 250, Y minus 250. And I'll send it back to zero. Oops, fat finger there. So let's see where we're sitting. It's right near the edge of the part, which is exactly where I want it. So that's good. We'll take a look from this direction. You'll see that it's on the spot here. So I'm satisfied with that position. 
the setup work I did yesterday not wasted except the, uh, the Z height position check and I'm now ready to uh, load the right tool to start my next operation and that's it